take one. My boy. Hello, My boy. here we are. My boy. Episode six. My boy. Just to show the fans how much we love them. It is currently 11 15 at night. Mary has just got off a plane from Manchester. So much turbulence. So I much turbulence. This. Okay, this is Mary Earps. What is a nickname for you? Mazdog. No one calls her that. That's 100% not true. The Mazanator. Yeah. <laughs> what? The, we're gonna just let it well, go. Well, it's Reggie. Erpsy. Erpsy, yeah. Reggie, you want to explain why you're called Reggie? Not particularly. Okay. Do you? <laughs> we can say it later. <laughs> okay, now we'll go into three words that describe you. Let's do this. You say one. Yeah. And then I'll also say one. You say two. About me. Two. Yeah. I'll start. Oh, God. Because hard working is two words. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't use that. <laughs> you can. <laughs> it's hyphenated. This is still one word. We're going to have a lot of edits. Okay, three words. Ambitious. Oh, you were starting, sorry. Um, special. Aw. Yeah, but all keepers are. Oh. Keep going. Yeah, but then I'm not special if every, all goalkeepers are. You're special in your own right. All right. Uh, grafter. And for the translation, that means hard working, but hard working is two words, so grafter is one. I would say um, stubborn. Why are you using like words with stubborn? Negative con conversation? Every, every player that I have interviewed to this point is great because they are stubborn. Uh, that's a great recovery. Um, and my third answer. Uh, what is it? A word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you speak English <laughs> as your mother language. Yeah, but um, I also speak German I would say, and Spanish. Did... I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Really? Yeah. I would say, de I would say though. determined. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am quite <laughs> <laughs> determined. Um, this is the intro. It's supposed to be it's under like 30 seconds. Three minutes three long, man. <laughs> um, I don't. I can't think of any other words apart from this, so I'm gonna say it, but I'm not really satisfied. Competitive. Oh, she is competitive. Oh yeah. What was the first game you ever went to? Live. Yeah. Mm. Say which was the first game. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's fine. Which was uh, much much was Liverpool Watford at Anfield. Oh, <sighs> great. As the English er. That you are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As an Englisher, you get to grow up with. <laughs> a what? Okay. An Englisher. An, an Englisher. English Do woman. You speak English. <laughs> As an English woman. English you don't woman get to experience. I would. That would be a dream. As your first game. That's yeah. It. How old were you? I I don't know how old I was, but I remember. I remember a lot of things about the game. I had Scouse pie, for the first time. So good. Is that? It's like sheep pie. Uh, no, it's like you know, you know Liverpool scouts. Liverpool people are called scousers. Ah, scouse, scouse pie, um, and I met some very lovely young fans, which you knew more swear words than me. That's so, hard to measure. Mm, it was good. I had a good time. Okay, now we have to go. You have to go quick. Which club did you sport when growing up, and why? Because all my family's from there. Who was your idol growing up? Steam Drone. Have you always been a goalkeeper? Yes. This is a rapid fire, it's just that we have to talk in between. <laughs> you told me to be fast. <laughs> I'm being really fast. How did your parents react when you told them you were going to be a goalkeeper? Some, somebody added, mine hated it, as they said, I was always going to be the one that gets the blame. Which is true, um, to be fair. I think my dad was just happy to see me play a position where I wasn't you know, running around hopelessly like I was chicken. <laughs> um, no, I, it was never really a discussion, I suppose. My mum definitely doesn't really like it in a no. way, because she gets nervous, she gets worried for me. But my dad, I think, he's, I've never not been a goalkeeper, so. I think most moms that are goalkeepers, mothers, have a little bit of anxiety in the stance because if you lose a game. Yeah, if we lose the game or, or, obviously it's quite, despite, obviously we don't run uh, a, a big distance, but it's still quite physical. 
you know, like you, there's a lot of physical contact. But you still also, I mean, it's kind of incredible thinking about that. You can run easily five to six kilometers in a game. Yeah, I'd, I'd average five to six a game for sure. I mean, that's, you run. I've known a field player that clocked five or six and she plays in the FAWSL for a game. Mm -hmm. That's all she ran, to be yeah. fair. Yeah. Um, growing up, did you play in a mixed team? No. I, I started out playing, training with my brother's team because that was just kind of how I was trying to figure out if I liked it, whatever. Um, but like I reached the age very quickly where boys and girls couldn't play in the same team. So I ended up joining a local girls team, which was set up by my school friend's dad at the time. Okay. Um, what do you think the advantage of women playing in mixed teams when growing up? Oh, it's really, I would always say train with boys because they can hit the ball harder especially as a goalkeeper, like if you can challenge yourself against guys of a similar age, even guys who are younger because they're just stronger in general. Yeah, they, they mature quicker. I, I trained with boys as much as I possibly could and was allowed to do when I was growing up. I think this is interesting for everyone from England, from Germany, from Denmark, from Iceland, um, from Holland. All these girls that have been in these incredible players in Sweden, they all trained with boys until they were in their older teens. So to everybody, I say to my niece, play with boys if you can and it's not that girls aren't good enough it's just boys mature quicker and then stop it i'm very serious <laughs> really good advice <laughs> they, really they, they mature they mature quicker so then yeah. you you adapt to the game and so then your body also gets ready to play a bit the best one players i've played with is yeah i liked it and even at university like i trained with um a guy's team yeah mm. your first club how did that happen how old were you when you signed for your first club ah uh, okay um, and which club uh, well, at the time, it would have been Doncaster Bells. That was when I was just turned 17. That was the year that the WSL started. So that's when I signed, but yeah, I mean, the game's kind of growing. I don't know when I signed my first professional okay. contract because professional to me is obviously doing it as your job. And I did that when I finished university, which was what, 2016. So I've been doing it professionally yeah. for two and a half years. Okay, you spent X years playing in the WSL yes. for a number of different teams. How did the WSL, WSL change during that time? Mm. And how did you change as a player and person? I'm interested for this too. Mm. Uh, so how many years did I play there? Uh, eight, I think, before I went to Wolfsburg. So... That's crazy. I mean, you're only 27? 26? 26. Sorry. Calm down. And um, you played eight years before you came to Wolfsburg? Yeah, because I played... I signed for Doncaster when I was 17. And I played most pretty much every game yeah. until I was 25. Like obviously there's some periods of on and off when you're moving and you're of trying course. to get in, you're get you're trying to earn the number one shirt. There's a bit of transition at some of the teams. Um, but yeah, because I obviously every move that I made was for one reason or another, i.e. like trying to get better goalkeeper coaching or trying to get a goalkeeper coach at all was hard at the beginning yeah. of the WSL. Um, because you know it's we, yeah, we have we, it's going like this women's football yeah, yeah it has it has its struggles like I didn't have I didn't have a lot of goalkeeper coaching and then you know just to go to a more professional environment or then to go to a better team to try and climb the table to try and challenge myself and see how far I could go determined mm. so yeah that I think my philosophy was always just trying to I mean it still is just try and better myself in any way shape or form and see how high I can go. Personal growth is ongoing, so come back to me in 10 years. Oh, you're gonna now play at my age. I don't know about it. <laughs> you old. Okay, you were, last question. You were named WSL Team of the Year in 2016 and 2017. What were your greatest strengths that season? Or maybe your top three strengths for that season? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. This was right before you came to Wolfsburg. Yeah, it was yeah. Reading. It was Reading. Um, I don't know, I think, it's hard to put your finger on things. Sometimes I call it like the penny drops. And I think maybe things came together for me in that season. Mm. Um, and it's hard to explain. It just kind of comes from experience and consistency. And I don't And you think... were 24, which is very, and yeah, I mean, for a goalkeeper, 25. it's very impressive. Yeah, I think that's what you're constantly striving for. I, you know, consistency, excellence, that's, that's what you're striving for. And sometimes it comes together. And I think in that season, it did come together. I think, you know, defensively we played well, which which helped. Um, 
yeah, I kept a lot of clean sheets that year. It's weird to see you're so serious. It's like very, what very do you, professional. Do you, yeah. Man United's giving you good training. <laughs> Now we're going into when you came to Wolfsburg. Yeah. When you met us five that changed your life forever. I don't even know who they are. And then to Man United. Not too bad folks no. there. No. Okay, so why Wolfsburg? And how did that happen? Best team in Germany. Wanted to play in Germany. Um, it was kind of a plan of mine for maybe, I'd say maybe like four or five years since I played against Frankfurt in the Champions League back in 2014, 13 maybe. You Avert wasn't there, or? No. Um, and yeah, when I saw like the style of play, like how organized everything was, it sounds stupid, but like they all rocked up with BMW 1 Series. And it was just like, they all parked in a line and you just thought, yeah, like it's efficient. So and, yeah, like <laughs> it's so, like it's so organized yeah. and it's so ahead of its time in terms of women's football that I just really wanted to go over there, experience it. Um, and yeah, I'm, very, 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 very glad that I did. In the men's game, it's quite unusual for English players to go and play abroad. Yeah. It has always been more common in the women's game. Why do you think that is? I mean... We don't want to get into too many yeah. politics here. Do, do I want to get into <laughs> I think it's different for women because you don't have your families based in a place, you know, and that makes it a lot more difficult to move. Of course. And Kids obviously... The Premier League is the best league in the world, so people want to be in England. So if English players get the opportunity to play in the Premier League, they don't really move. Understandable. Perfect. In one set, this is a good question. Whoever asked this one, Madame. In one sentence, how would you describe your year in Wolfsburg? Boy, <laughs> I need more words. I need more words. Um, I also do that. Yeah. Um, Wolfsburg, uh, an, an incredible experience. Um, Life changing. I, I just say life changing. That's probably forget a sentence. Just say two words because it's happening. The German league really. Your time in Germany really shows you who you your or it shows your true colors. Shows you who you really are. Yeah, as a, as a player and as a person, I yeah. learned a lot that year. Yeah. How does your German league differ she's from the? Po he's poking me. But how I, does the German league differ to the WSL? Um, I really liked how organized it was. How. You always knew what the schedule, scheduling of games. You know, I really liked the Christmas break. That was really great. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say the, the way it was ran, like it's, I feel like coming back to the WSL now, it's in a lot better place than it was when I left it. Mm -hmm. But you know, things changed at the drop of a dime and that as a, as a footballer can be really frustrating. So having, yeah, just kind of always knowing what you're gonna get. Um, was good and I, and I don't even know what the question was but obviously yeah, there's good. some in, insane players in yeah. the Bundesliga like it's, and at Wolfsburg so to test yourself in training every single day against that calibre of player and then also you in games as well. You have to adapt and become better for sure. Yeah you, you have to level up there's no other there's no other way. Um, should the Wolfsburg team, last one about Wolfsburg, should the Wolfsburg team have won the Champions League last year? No. <laughs> Pretend you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Leon, Leon beat us out and out. They were the, by far the better team. Yeah. But I absolutely, with every fibre of my being, thought that we ha we could have won the Champions League. But in the two games, we didn't produce. So, no, Leon won fair and square. Okay, going on to Man United. You're only at Wolfsburg for one season. How did that move to Man United happen? And why return to England so soon? I'm sorry, let me just get this one. When Man United comes, you can add to it, of course. Ah. When Man United comes calling, I think most people in the right mind would say, yes, please. Um, okay, Man United. Man United came about through a lot of patience. Um, <laughs> I knew that I knew that I wasn't gonna stay at Wolfsburg because I wanted to play. And yeah, it was incredible for a year, but I kind of always knew going into it that it was only ever gonna be a one year thing. Um, I didn't know if I was going to come back to England or not. For me, it just was dictated by the enormity of the opportunity at Manchester United. I think it's... Manchester United. Yeah, it's, it's... so much cooler when you say it. <laughs> I don't Man know. Manchester United. Is that what I said? United. United. Um, yeah, just it, a huge, huge opportunity there. I think they're going to be one of the best teams in the world within five six years so did you bring me one of your jerseys i've actually brought you a training top yes 
<laughs> Made it. Okay, what is it like training and being coached by Casey Stoney, one of the greatest lionesses ever? Yeah, it's cool. Like, I think it's always great learning from people who can speak with real, like, experience. Like, when someone has lived and breathed what you're experiencing, mm -hmm. their whatever they say and do or their advice to you has so much more gravitas. It's hard to explain. It has so much more weight to it. Yeah. And so I think, obviously, as a defender, I'm very defensive-minded. I want to keep clean sheets. She wants to keep clean sheets. Like, it's obviously great to try and learn from her. I think also what we talked about, about uh, Coach Stoney, what do you call her, Casey? Or? Yeah, Case. Case, Casey. Mm -hmm. Casey. And it, it's unique that a coach, sometimes I think when you coach, you play and then go to coaching, you forget what it was like to be a player because you have right. to change your mindset. Yeah, right. But I think the best coaches can do both. And it sounds like she can do that. Yeah, I think I, I feel like she, the way she structures certain things is from her experiences as a player and I think it's rare that co players who go into coaching, I feel like they often forget maybe the gripes and stuff that they had when they were a player. Exactly. And I don't feel like, I feel like Casey's has done that. Like I can see some of the things she does and I'm like, yeah, I bet that's because it really pissed you off when you were good to hear. Um, do you ever score any goals in training? <laughs> All the time. How, how much interaction do you have with the men's team? Not loads. Obviously, me and De Gea are like nearly best friends now because we, we follow exactly each other on the ground. Moment, but he followed her. But. Um, you know, but yeah, not not too much. Obviously, we train at different locations, so there's not much of a crossover. Um, we've bumped into each other for medical appointments or um, you know, like screening, fitness testing, or sometimes we do sessions at Carrington. So, yeah. how um, okay are we likely to see Man United women play at Old Trafford soon? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it will be this year, this season, uh, but I could see it for sure. I think just got to make sure that everyone buys tickets and fills it out because it's a huge stadium. So if there's demand for it, I guarantee you it will be put on a plate. So keep I mean, sending messages and definitely buy tickets. It's incredible what you guys just did against Germany, to be fair. But we'll get into that from England. Okay. So that will be. Um, last question: What are the ambitions of the club this season and for the future? This season, um, obviously finish as high as we possibly can in the table. I think realistically top five, but we've done so well this start of the season that, I mean, top four would be amazing. And I think going forward, especially now that a Champions League spot has opened up, another Champions League spot has opened up for the Brazil. Yeah, top three, yeah. Yeah, top three. So if, if we can get one of those, I think we wanted to be in the Champions League within three to five years and winning it between five and six, I think. Um, that's doable for sure. I mean, that was maybe that's just my personal ambition. So maybe I can't speak on behalf <laughs> of everyone. It's on the vision board. Yeah. <laughs> but now, but now I feel like that timeline can be brought forward, especially with like the vision and if investment keeps getting putting in, you know, keep developing as a team, br bringing in bigger and better players. Like it will be insane. Like I think everyone's done a really great job as well so far this season. The girls that, who've stepped up from the championship as well. Like it's not an easy thing to do, and people have really stepped up so it's been good it's been real good how did you find out you've been called up for the first time and how did you feel um i had a missed call from the administrator which was very odd i was at home um and it was a voicemail from brent hills mm -hmm. saying please i would like you to come to the training camp we was, it was down south, it was Bournemouth, Portsmouth, it's that sort of way. And I was just like jumping for joy. I was 20, I was at home with my mum and dad. 20, 20. I, I ran downstairs and I was just kind of like dancing around, like, do I call them back? Do I call them back? And I had, I had to take a minute to like compose. Mm -hmm. And then I rang back and just pretended like, yeah, that's cool. That's totally fine. I'm fine with that. How was you, what was your highlight of the 2019 World Cup? highlight that's that was really so hard it's really hard because you know what the, what i found with the world cup is that and i don't know if this is a just my personal experience but when we got to the semi-final like getting to the semi-final everything was gravy do you know what i mean we were having such a good time on and off the pitch but then when it got to the semi-final and that crash of the semi-final was was hard like mm. that was a real 
I don't even know how to explain it. Like, we obviously you prepare, you you go in thinking you're going to win that game. Really, you know, it's a tight game. It, I really feel like it could have gone either way. I think both teams put on good shows at different spells in the game. Yeah. And then you're 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 not out the tournament because you've still got to play for you, for the, for the medal, which I wanted more than anything. But you've got to deal with that emotion of losing and not winning the World Cup, which is what you've been thinking every single day. You're like, World Cup, I want the World Cup gold, yeah, I want course. the trophy. Like, how, like I, it's so, I don't even know. I don't even know, but that was that was hard to deal with. During the World Cup, we saw... <laughs> that was, question. but that was, you asked me what my highlight was and I just told you my low point. Yeah, but we, we'll keep going. But that's Go why it's hard to pick the highlight, because right. I don't think we... If we'd have finished She's with a, a competitive medal... competitive athlete. Yeah, if we'd have finished with a medal, I'd have been like, mm. boom. But, I mean, the highlight for me was being at a World Cup. Like, that's something that I've dreamt of ever since I was a kid. But in terms of, like, because we didn't come away with anything, it's, it's really hard to be like, that was a highlight. During the World Cup, we saw people criticizing goalkeepers and saying... We why are you have, smiling for? Wait for it. And saying we should have... Isn't funny. Smaller goals. Ah, oh, what's your opinion on I this? No. <laughs> you started. We'll go into this. You started the record-breaking match at Wembley in November. Yeah. Ninety thousand, right? Seventy-seven. But who's counting? We'll go. We round up to ninety. Seventy-eight, really, if you're rounding up, yeah. Um. And when did you find out that you were starting? And how did it? I mean, did you when you found out? Did you prepare different for that game? And what were you? I mean, you were standing in front of okay, German. Germany and you knew a lot of players mm -hmm. and this was probably this is your biggest game probably yeah. anyone will ever play in yeah how did you feel uh unreal like I think there's obviously there's things you'd go back and you'd change and you'd be like oh I could have done this could have done that I always want to better myself but the uh, first and foremost how to change the result of the game but I think that it was a real like the the thing that I'll remember most about it is I, when my parents, I, I don't know how I saw them. I, th I kind of knew where the family and friends were going to be and they were like directly sort of like above where we were standing to sing the national anthem. Okay. And I remember watching my mum and dad come in. So they must have got stuck in queues because normally they're there like before the anthem. And I remember seeing them and like my mum's like getting her phone out to record the anthem. And I just thought like, this is literally everything you've worked for yeah literally all the all the sessions and all the things you do that nobody sees that you're just grafting aimlessly but not aimlessly you know you always have a, a, a goal you in question mind. if it's worth it but you're like is this ever gonna happen for me yeah, for sure. am i ever gonna be good enough or am i ever gonna get that shot because a lot of things when you get to international level a lot of things are out with your control you know you can't control and domestically to be fair yeah, domestically it's a little bit different. Depending where you play, what yeah, country. it's a little okay. bit different. Like because when you're at club, obviously, it's you have a little bit more of a say of like how things go because you know because you see them every day. Yeah. Internationally, you see each other a handful of times in an entire year. You train for two days and then you're playing a game. Yeah. Like you have. You're not getting more than crafted and. No, it, yeah. it you know you don't have the same. Uh, it's not the same as club. So yeah, I, it was just it was a real like. Win, lose, or draw. That was my thing going into the game. I was like, win, lose, or draw. Wow. That's it. Should be a quote. Um, I can Google. A new record attendant was set that game, yeah. which is great. What are the next steps for women's football in England? To consistently build attendances within the league. Like, the app, I think, has been unbelievable. The, like The app is... We watch games here in Madrid. I spoke I mean, to... I spoke to the... Because um, the commercial team for the WSL in England, they're... They obviously communicate because, yeah, of scheduling yeah, fixtures of and whatever, and international breaks. And I was just like, however you've brought this together, however many years it's taken, you know, whether you did it within a week or seven years, like, unbelievable. It's I think it's completely changed the transparency. The, you know, like people can watch games all over the world and be engaged with it, and not just go based off what they heard someone else say, or they read the match report and then they think they know the game. No, they actually saw it. You know what I mean? So and people can yeah. actually have an opinion on women's football now. And you get to learn. I mean, I've been the stuff in, in between, like the halftime. I don't know many players in the WSL, but right. just the little features that they have on, it's it's quite interesting. And you find, you get to see different characters of the game. Yeah. I mean, there's nowhere like that 
There's no. no one else that provides that in the world. No, I think I, I think honestly that's, that changes the game completely. No. And, but in terms of what's next, I think regularly trying to sell out stadiums, not just like on a one-off, like regularly sell them out and get then put them into bigger stadiums and yeah, then getting more people, you know what I mean? Like that, because when consistent. the atmosphere, when there's, is unreal, it's unbelievable. And it like, it really can like, you know, imagine having like, okay, so that's 77,000. Imagine that the, like 60,000 or 70,000 of that is your home funds yeah. for your club. Like the Barmy Army are nuts, to be fair. Like they make some noise. That's the Man United fans. Thank you. But you're welcome. Um, and the Barney Army. The Barmy Army. Barmy? Barmy. Like, are you saying an R in there? Yes, I am, yeah. <laughs> I'll Google you guys later. Good job. No, seriously. Maybe, I'll, maybe I can I, come join if you for one of your it, games. When, when you come to visit, when? In Friend, the new year. Right? Hmm? When you come to visit, I guarantee you, I will set you up with the Barmy Army and you when I come, will I'm have When I'm coming a ball. in with the Barmy Army. Listen, Barmy Army, I'll set it up. It's good. It's good. Okay. Who's the DJ in the England dressing room and what's your favorite song? Oh God, this is going to take forever. What's your favorite song to listen to before a game? I think the DJ in the England changing room now is Leah Williamson and that suits me fine because I like her music taste. Um, favorite song to listen to before a game, it really does vary because new music comes out all the time. She and is a music I girl. She love it. You send me a single once to be fair. At the minute, I can't even remember. It's called Run For Your Life. That's my bit. That's my one at the minute. It's so good. I can't, I can't remember who it's called. Where's my phone? I can. I can. It's, we'll, no. we'll swipe. It's that. called Run for Your Life. Maybe we'll put it on as like you know when you do like a, a like a like a poster on the Instagram. Just have it. Mm. Run for your life. 